Hello lovely people. Today I'm going to do something I've never done on this channel. I'm going to bring on a guest who I know many of you are eager to meet and I'd like to do that because he's kind of an expert in the topic. Hello. <laughs> this is my husband Mark and he's totally to blame for all of this. He's the reason why I am so familiar with the differences between British and American foods and also why I, a born and bred New Yorker, sometimes sound a little bit British because, well, I've spent a lot of time in the UK. Oh, that's where I'm from. <laughs> it is indeed. So I've become pretty attuned to the whole two countries separated by a common language thing. And wherever I go, people ask, where are you guys from? She hates that because it implicates you as one of my lot. I know. Like I've contaminated you. I know. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for showing up in the comments on our first video about British American vegetable differences. You asked for more, so here it is. But before we bite into our first sandwich, real quick, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss when a video goes live. Okay, Sarnies. Sandwiches. <laughs> we say Sammy here sometimes, I've heard. I don't say that. No, I don't say that. But they say Sarni, so. And there's an R in that. You won't hear it in his. Sarni. Sarni. <laughs> so I'll start by saying the American impression of British sandwiches is basically these dainty little crustless tea sandwiches served at sort of a high tea. Yeah, is that all you eat? <laughs> yeah, which is sort of what you only find at the Dorchester or Claridge's for like 250 quid. The, those are hotels. Exclusively for American tourists. <laughs> those are very fancy hotels in London. That's and, what it, and make sure you don't turn up hungry. Yeah, right, right, because everything is a little itty bitty. Um, I will be translating for Mark throughout this, this video. <laughs> My first memory of eating a British sandwich like made by um, actually his mom. We, she packed us off a lunch. We went to a football match at Fulham. Soccer. <laughs> Soccer. <laughs> You'll be translating. <laughs> Just one of the great Fulham moments. The only thing that was on that sandwich was ham and butter. There was so much butter on that sandwich. I was sort of like, appalled by it. I was like very alarmed that I was eating that much butter. But that said, I am so down with the butter now. <laughs> oh, she's fully signed up for butter sandwiches with a little bit of ham. Yes. Perfect. Leave the ham off. I'm fine with the butter. <laughs> and yet American sandwiches, so I grew up with the idea of Amer American sandwiches being like this sort of Scooby-Doo, you know, at least 17 layers of meat, cheese, meat, bologna, <laughs> ham, like every packed in, can't get your mouth around it. And those are the small ones. Which I have never actually had. That's only in a cartoon that, oh no, okay. If you go to like a diner or something, maybe they like really pile it on or there's a name for a sandwich. What is it guys? The club sandwich maybe? Is that, that's like bread, meat, bread, meat, bread. <laughs> But nobody eats that but at home. But also just fillings, right? So yeah. you would go, you know, when I used to live in New York and I'd go to the, the Afghan 24-hour deli at the corner of my road and, you know, whatever sandwich you asked for, they would load it up. There'd be four to five times the amount of meat or tuna fish or whatever the filling was yeah. that you needed. It was just this this brick of filling with, yeah. the, with yeah. the bread either side. Well, excess is what we're known for. Like, that that stands today. Like, I, I know my mother-in-law just kind of always comments on the massive portions that we are known for here in the States. You're known for big portions here? It's astounding, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, our first sandwich, chip butty. Oh. What's a chip butty? A chip butty. <laughs> um, I mean, can you guess? Chips? Oh. That's it, chips. Okay, chips are not chips for you. Chips oh, for right. us are french fries for you. Yes. Okay, except they're not actually French fries. They're big, fat, juicy, like, sometimes soggy, which is good, chips, right? As in British fish and chips. Like, um, we would get them at maybe like a steakhouse. Steak fries, I think we call them. Like those really thick cut French fries. Right, French and fries. so that, you know, it's basically like, you know, big, two big hunks of bread, slap it down, S chips. Starch on starch. Yes, yeah, That's it, guys. Starch. Wait, but what about the condiments? What, what What's on it? Um, you could really go with whatever you want. Tomato ketchup, HP sauce, which is a brown sauce, which is horrifically 
awful for, for a lot of people. I quite like it. Delicious. Doesn't it sound so delicious? I used to like it a lot more. I love a bit of brown. I've not actually tried a chip butty. No. Oh, we can make it Why happen. is it called a butty? A butty? I don't know, maybe because there's butter on it. I don't know the derivation. I brought him on to be my expert. He doesn't know, guys. <laughs> What kind of bread is it on? Is it a conventional? Oh, white, white bread. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have some sort of. Is it on a roll or like no a piece of white? You bread? could have it on a roll. You could have it on a bap. I mean, we'll get to baps later. Just, just hold your fire. Hold your fire okay, on baps. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh, I have bacon butty. <laughs> <laughs> how would, how would you actually say it? Bacon buddy. All right, bacon buddy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want with that bacon buddy? <laughs> so, what is a bacon buddy? It's if you can believe it or not. Bacon <laughs> in the sandwich is the main filling, and that's pretty much it. But the bacon is completely different, right? So the sort of the streaky bacon that you have here, which you can buy in the UK, yeah. like a proper, proper bacon butter, you're going to have those sort of thick, those thick rashers. What are rashers. they called? Rashers. <laughs> what, what are they called? I mean, there's lots of bacon to choose from. If you go oh to a supermarket yes. in England. Oh my God, this is like a crazy thing. You go into a supermarket in England and they have like an entire section just a bacon. I mean, uh, yeah, we have like, you know, a few packets there with like sausages and things, other things. No, huge section. A yeah, huge we, we have the bacon aisle. The bacon aisle. Yeah, we also have a sausage aisle. Yes, yes, they do. We have the BLT, right? Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Do you do the LT? Yeah, uh, yes, it's known. Yeah, I mean, BLT, in fact, it's probably quite exotic to some people still, but yeah, we do BLT. Meaning like it's very American. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's talk about sweet sandwiches because this is very American. Peanut butter and jelly was not like the childhood go-to for you, right? Except that we have American cousins and would come over to the United States and have them on the beach. And it, again, it seemed very exotic and very American, but- But that's it. It was like the thing you ate on vacation when you came and visited your American yes, family. Yes, and I'm sure it's completely different now and is much more ubiquitous in the UK. Yeah. Or more so than it used to be. Um, what we don't do here, which I have heard of in uh, the UK, is uh, the jam sandwich. I have heard of little kids going off to school with jam sandwiches, like no peanut butter. I don't know, is there anything else on it? I mean, obviously butter. Ah, okay. See, that kind of thing is like a breakfast only thing. Not necessarily a sandwich, but like toast with butter and jam. But as a lunchtime sandwich, I wouldn't give our Yes, son I never had that for lunchtime sandwiches. Thank you, mom. But we would sometimes sneak them in when we came home from school. You, know, you come home from school, cup oh. of tea, jam sandwich, or just bread and butter. But e either way, yeah, a nice jam yeah. sandwich is very, very delicious with a cup of tea. Okay. <laughs> Peanut butter and fluff. Oh, where are my fluff and nutters out there? <laughs> I, th I, th I I think I do actually know what this is. <laughs> so growing up, I mean, it wasn't something that like I could regularly take to school, but we did have a container of fluff, which is spreadable marshmallow, and you use it like jam on a sandwich. It is like eating a candy oh sandwich. Oh goodness. It is delicious. I should just say, what? I haven't had it in a very long time. I remember them being delicious. I don't know if it would like make me want to throw up now, but it, I loved it then. In fact, I remember when I um, studied abroad at university in Madrid, um, I had my mom send me a package of things, or maybe she just sent me a care package and she put a container of fluff in this. And I remember this evening of making peanut butter and fluff sandwiches with um, the family I was living with. And it was just like a riot. They just could not believe that this was a sandwich. She, they were like, it's supposed to taste like this. <laughs> yeah, so I, I can understand how it's a very bizarre thing, but it... <sighs> yeah, I think they were right to cast shade on that. Yeah, yeah. all right, fair enough. I don't give it to my own, our own son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's combine our sort of salty sweet categories. There is a classic British combination called Coronation Chicken. Ooh. And it's essentially like a, a curried chicken salad. That's what we would call it here. Why do you call it coronation chicken? I think it was like made for um, uh, the coronation of the queen in 1953. Oh, queen of Elizabeth, course it was. Queen Elizabeth II. Oh, yeah. And um, why they came up with this recipe, I don't know, but with this sort of the saltiness of the kind of the chicken stuff and the, and the sultanas or the... Oh, raisins. now we've got to get into sultanas and yes, raisins. Yes, we don't really call 
them sultanas here. Yeah. They're golden raisins, right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Wait, now coronation chicken is just totally not known in the US? We, I, you know, guys, uh, I don't think we have coronation chicken, but we certainly have curry chicken salad. You know what we have? We have the Waldorf salad. Do you know that one? That's celery-ish. Yes, that is chicken with mayo and celery walnuts? and grapes. Grapes, ah, oh, yes. And walnuts, yeah. yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yes. We have that, you guys don't have that. Uh, not so much. Not so much, no. Yeah, started in if New at York all. Yeah. at the okay. Waldorf yeah. Hotel. Um, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. I, I I'm a I like coronation chicken. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll go with the coronation. Your Majesty, let's talk about types. I'm oh, sorry, I thought we were talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call you. That's my pet name. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> okay, let's just like break down some of the key ingredients with sandwiches, and we can talk about the differences there. Would one of those ingredients be bread, Nicole? <laughs> Funny enough, yes. There is the bap. Did we mention the bap earlier? Uh, we did mention it. But it's like a classic, like, for that chip butty or the, the bacon butty, right? It could be, yes. Yeah. I mean, you could put those butties in, in, with any bread, but yeah, but like sort of a fairly large, uh, flattish roll. Uh, where you can just, you know, there's a decent amount of real estate. I mean, it's, I think it's bigger than the Kaiser. I was going to say, it's sort of like a Kaiser. The Kaiser roll is known to everyone? Yeah, Kaiser roll. We have the Kaiser roll with the little, like, poppy seeds on top. This does not have seeds on top, generally. Yeah, it's not as airy. I mean, it's it's nicer. It's a bit bland. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing mind. special. But, you know, it's, it's decent. Just, just a vehicle. A vehicle to get the food in the mouth. Condiments. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, what are you thinking of? Oh, I mean, this is like a whole separate video in a way, right? So the two big pickled base condiments that we had yeah. growing up, Branston, uh, Branston pickle, which was this brown pickle of whatever they Gorgeous. put in this stuff. Slather that on the cheese. Wait, did you like that as a kid? A brown yes. pickle? Oh, yes, Branston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or piccalilli, which is this electric neon yellowy green stuff that comes out of a jar you slap it on it's what's, got what's the taste difference between piccalilli and branston uh branston is sweet uh piccalilli is a little bit more um a little more this not not piquant it's a little bit more <laughs> it's just got more shoulders in it yeah <laughs> i don't know how to describe that is it a little bit piccalilli. more fermented like it do you no uh, have, you, have you tried it yeah, once, once a long time ago, and I liked it. I did. It was the it was like a, the fancy kind, like a restaurant had made its own piccalilli, which is just so fun to say. It's like a child's like. I mean, I don't it's know. fun to look at. It's a very piccalilli. bright. Yeah, it's, it's... <laughs> like, you're, like elves serve it to you. piccalilli. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what we didn't even you know talk about is the derivation of the word sandwich. Um, oh, there's that whole mythology yeah. that it comes from the UK. I mean, there really was an Earl of Sandwich, and he really did order some like you know meat in between bread so that he could stay up all night gambling. You know, he didn't want to stop his game to have dinner. He's like, bring me the food so I can eat it while I keep gambling but that was not the first sandwich to ever be invented right no and that's and the big caveat to that is all of that that nicole just said possibly happened i mean we don't really know but right. yes it's there in was a diary a, but Some there was an old sandwich yeah. there is a place in england called sandwich yeah and so he popularized it as in the uk in the in the uk and across europe as a member of the nobility but i mean sandwiches have been around for millennia and putting you know, pieces of food between bread or bread-like stuff i mean for... in the middle east east asia they might not be using like a wheat bread but they use like a rice paper or you know a dumpling wrapper that kind of thing it's all variations of you know what we think of in western culture as the sandwich and then between the us and the uk who has the best sandwiches well I mean, let's what? let's leave that up to our audience. But, but, but okay. name specific sandwiches that are 
emblematic of the UK or the US that you particularly love and say why you love them? Or um, mention the one you would like to try. If there's something that uh, maybe Mark has mentioned and it sounds tasty, let us know uh, in the comments below. And maybe I can convince him to come back and join me for another one of these UK versus US videos. Guys, don't forget. What? No, no, no. That's great. That's the, no, okay. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and like and share. And I'll see you back here real soon. Hopefully he will too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, like putting crisps in. On a but on a on a butty? No, on a chip butty? No, you wouldn't put crisps on the chip on the chip butty. <laughs> you wouldn't put crisps on the, on the chip butty. This man loves a sandwich. <laughs> He's happy to have a sandwich for dinner if, you know, that's on the menu. Your, your point being? <laughs> he loves a sandwich. I love a sandwich. <laughs> Who doesn't? You don't actually like a sandwich? I like sandwiches. Sandwiches are fine, but I don't crave a sandwich. You just like really love. You roped me into doing a whole video on sandwiches. You don't even like a sandwich. I like sandwiches. Don't say that. I, I like sandwiches. I don't have a passion for them. I think you have a passion for them. I have a passion for sandwiches. <laughs>